petition you with the clouds of incense that we raise. Intercede for us with the Lord, whom you serve throughout your life. Implore him to watch over us in this world, and to keep us from the misfortunes of soul and body. And we will glorify the holy life-giving Trinity, now and forever.
the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. And because of this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles, <coughs> if, as I suppose, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, so that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. Of this I have become a minister by the gift of God's grace, that what was granted me in accord with the exercise of His power. To me, the very least of all the saints, this grace has been given to preach to the nations the inscrutable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery hidden from all ages past in God, who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the Church, through the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. So I ask you to not lose heart over my afflictions for you, for this is your glory. Praise be to God always. Christ, 
came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, as he was a righteous man, was yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to separate from her quietly. Such was his intention. When, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She shall bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took his wife into his home. He did not know her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he named him Jesus. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessing to Jesus Christ. Life often hurts. 
And for that reason, if Adam and Eve were to partake of the tree of immortality, life and their existence would have gone from bad to worse. In other words, you would have gone on in this pain and suffering and loss year after year, again and again. And so immortality was at that point not something that man could either shoulder, nor would it have been a benefit to him by the pain and the wounds that come by the fall. But on the third point that we can notice is in always in our Syriac tradition, these things are all types. They foreshadow something. They foretell something in prophecy. So you know in prophecies in the old law, they can sometimes be verbal. Things are said that will happen. But most often, it seems, they are images. They are what we call types, typoi in the Greek. And the anti-type is actually the reality that is being announced by the type. And in this instance, the keru, the protector, the guardian of the tree of immortality, is the type of Joseph of Nazareth. You see it in the opening prayer in the Fenkito today, that the true tree of life that is to come was not something in the past and the beginning of humanity, but the tree of life was the life of God to be given to mankind. And the tree of life that bears the fruit, and that fruit is the source of that life in God. Adam and Eve, in their fall, they break this relationship, they break this friendship with infinite goodness. The life that God desired to give to mankind from the beginning is still His intention. But it became in the story of Genesis, not yet. And the true life, and the true tree of life, and the true fruit of life was being announced in Genesis already at the beginning. But the reality of the tree of life is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the fruit that that tree bore of immortality is our Lord. And so you'll notice in the opening prayer of the Fenkitho, it's quite beautiful because it speaks of Saint Joseph as being the Kevin. He is the protector and the guardian of the tree of life announced in Genesis, but seen in its reality in Nazareth. And so when we celebrate St. Joseph, it's one of great admiration. This is a man, a young man, for whom all of providence came upon his shoulders, we could say. Because the whole structure of the life of the family of Nazareth was under the guardianship and the headship of this young man of Nazareth. This is why in the Gospel of St. Matthew that we have today in the first chapter, we see his apprehension. This is an upright man. This is a just man. This is a man who knows what is going on around him. And that's why he becomes overwhelmed. And while Mary is gone in the visitation during those three nuns, we've, we've considered this in the season of the announcements. He's overwhelmed by the idea of this. This is why we often speak of St. Joseph, almost inevitably all the time, as St. Joseph the Chosen One, St. Joseph the Just One. These are titles that are always coupled together with his name whenever we speak of St. Joseph in the Syriac tradition. The Just One, because this was a man of upright religious integrity, very sensitive to the inspirations of God. And though he was married to Our Lady, as we mentioned, there are two stages in this Semitic marriage. So he's married to her, but they've not had the indwelling or the cohabitation. She's not moved in with him yet. That's what the angel comes to tell him to do. But it's in that interim period, but sometimes maybe up to a year. It's during that period of time when he's overwhelmed by this idea, I cannot do this. And it's why when the angel comes to him in the dream, like the prophet Joseph in the old, who is a type of the Joseph of Nazareth. The angel comes and uses the messianic title, son of David. You must take your wife into your home. Finish this celebration of your marriage. And yes, it is true. This child is conceived by the spirit of holiness. But you will name this child. And so as we've considered before, 
you see what St. Matthew is doing in the Gospel. He quotes from Isaiah, a virgin will conceive. But in Isaiah it says that she will name him Emmanuel. Or in some cases, he shall be called Emmanuel. But St. Matthew makes it very clear, and this is what we began the sermon with, the quotation is, he names the child Yeshua, names the child Jesus. This is his guardianship. And so it's a very beautiful image on this day that we solemnize this feast of our great patron. And to understand that though this man, we never hear any words from him. He is pivotal to the whole plan of bringing the tree of life into reality. It's only announced in the woundedness of mankind in Genesis, but is found in its reality of Nazareth. So really today, it's just simply one of admiration. This is a man who accepted what God asked of him to do. As painful as it was going to be, exile, persecutions, difficulties, all of these things were part and parcel of his life. But he is the one who provides to the world as the, the carer, the protector, the guardian. He is the one who brings in the guardianship the access for us to the tree of life, Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of God. And that, as you notice in the prayer, the opening prayer in the Fenquito, that we be able to partake of that fruit. Well, that fruit, of course, is our Divine Lord in His Incarnation, and specifically being the opening of the Eucharistic sacrifice, His presence in the Eucharist. And so on this day we admire. We admire the hand of God in His beauty, and we understand the great centrality of St. Joseph to the whole work of the redemption in the Gospel. That's all. Nothing else for us to understand except the beauty of the work of God. And that when St. Joseph was born into the world thousands of years after the creation of humanity, he is a fulfillment of God's ever-present desire to bring life to us as mankind, as humanity, but also individually. And so the phrase, as we say, it is carved on the front of the great oratory in Montreal, Ite ad Yosef, go to Joseph. And that notion of the protection that we have from him, may it be a source of blessing to us all, and may it be a great source of our desire to pursue holiness this day and all the days of our lives. May his prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. <coughs>
be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the Holy Kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Wow. 
God, be for us a pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, the body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that dies us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. with our bodies and souls, and that it may be for the pardon of false and forgiveness of sins and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints.
O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation. Who offered yourself for us? You are the forgiving sacrifice. Who offered yourself to your Father? You are the high priest. Who offered yourself as a lamb? Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you, Lord. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. He accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven,
give and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O
Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el Kodukhud. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, Bless us and sanctify us by the living cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.